Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Leah and today I thought I would take you through how I make tea. So it sounds so simple, but I get this question all the time. Leah, please show us how you make a proper cup of tea, how you make tea, how do you like tea? And the answer is, is that there's so many different ways, but I thought I'd go across some of the most popular ways of making tea today, including the way I make tea. And also, if you do stay to the very end, I'll show you sort of like a Greek Cypriot little twist on British tea. I know that's probably not what you're here for, but if you are interested, stay till the very end and I will show you that. So where do we begin? Where do we begin? Okay. In front of me, I have got four different teapots and they're all of different sizes. So you've got like a four person one, a two person one, a one person one, and a two person one. But all my different teapots here have got uh, different properties. So I've got one that's made out of uh, stainless steel, one that's bone china, one that's like glass with a little sieve thing and I'm going to go through everything. I just think it's quite a mammoth video ahead of me right now. So what I will do is in the top line of the description, I'll place some timestamps. So if you're wanting to skip to how you make tea in a cup with a tea bag, no teapot involved at all, then you can skip to that. Or if you're interested in sticking around for the deep dive into these teapots, teacups, bone china, porcelain, all of that, then just maybe just stay for the long run or look at the timestamps. Now that the parish notices are over, let's just get straight to it. For today's video, I'm going to be using Yorkshire tea as that is my tea of preference at the moment. I'm not really loyal to any tea brand really, but I just at the moment we've got Yorkshire tea in and I like the colour that it comes out. So if we start off with a really simple cup of tea, no teapot involved, what you would probably get if you went into 90% of homes in the UK and said, can I get a cup of tea? This is what you would get and this is how they'd make it. So tea bag, usually in here or sometimes people put them in like these little glass jars. I've got mine, it says builder's tea on it. Just to fact check that. Builder's tea, also known as a builder's brew, is a British English colloquial term for a strong cup of tea. So it's a strong brew. Brew is just another word for tea. Can they have a brew, a tea, a drink? Yeah. It takes its name from the inexpensive tea commonly drunk by labourers taking a break. Black tea, English breakfast tea, tea. Just the term tea on its own usually refers to builder's tea. So I've called it builder's tea here. It's just English tea. So, cup, check. Tea bag, check. Kettle, got here. Usually, tap water here where I live is quite hard, so we use a Brita filter. So you've got some filtered water going in there. Usually don't boil the whole lot. Obviously, I don't need that much boiled water. That's about enough for two cups. Kettle's on. We'll wait for that to boil. So my kettle's boiled and my tea bag is in my cup. I'm just gonna pour it to, ooh, not that aggressively, nearly the top. And I'm just gonna let that brew for a bit of time. There will be people that will put the milk in first before the tea bag or the hot water. To me, that's criminal, but that's just something I feel. We'll talk a bit later about when I put the milk in first when it's to do with a teapot. But if you're making tea the quick way, the most common way, you don't put the milk in first. In fact, there's a really famous song by Dr. Brown where he's like, you've only gone and put the fucking milk in first. But then what I see made my heart burst. You've only gone and put the milk in first. <laughs> and everyone's like, yeah, that's so funny. All Brits rejoice over that. Now you need a spoon. Oh my gosh, I've just found the most hilarious Harry and Meghan spoon. I'll save that for later when I do the posh bit. Right, I just wanted to find one that was a good size. So a teaspoon and never ever squeeze. You're gonna find people that are squeezing. You're gonna find people that are like squidging it up to the side. I just sort of move it around a bit, lift it up and down like that. <laughs> this splits people down the middle. So, I mean, I think my mum always used to give the tea bag a really good squeeze, but then I read somewhere that you're not meant to do that. So I follow the rules, guys. So that's been brewing for, I don't know, not very long, about a minute, maybe less. And now we get some milk. Another thing that splits people down the middle. 
We've got lacto-free milk, so green's like not full fat and not completely skimmed, it's semi-skimmed in the UK and I think this is kind of like you can't go wrong with green milk and then also the lactose free one if you give it to a guest like they never really know that there's no dairy in it so don't worry about that use green milk use whatever I've also got Oatly because I really like the way Oatly tastes in tea I think it was also voted number one dairy free milk in hot drinks I believe they won that award as if that award exists but it does so then, yeah, my tea's been brewing for a while. I'm just gonna get my milk, pour that in. Yeah, this is where some people might be like, oh, I, I want a really strong tea. If someone wants a really strong tea, it means they want their tea bag to sit in there for a really long time, just to make the flavors really strong. If someone wants quite a weak tea, it means that they want that tea bag out quite quickly. Remember that video that went viral on TikTok of that woman where she sort of dipped the tea bag in? I mean, that was criminal but that's like weaker than weak. If someone wants a weak tea, I've probably taken that out about a minute ago. I'm gonna take it out now. Now there's the temptation to squeeze. You're not meant to squeeze. Shall I just squeeze a bit? No, you're not meant to. I'll throw that away. And this is the color we've got here. You saw how much milk I put in. I think this is a pretty passable brew for a lot of people. I think I've made that a very nice color. I don't know of anyone who would have a problem with that color. Unless they say, I want a really, really milky tea. And then again, there's even more questions here because when someone asks for a really milky tea, it doesn't necessarily mean that they want a weak tea. They want it strong, brewed for a long time, about as long as that, if not longer, but just more milk in there. So I can see why it's so hard to get it wrong, guys. I do feel for everyone. This has taken me 26 years to understand and here I am, you know, trying to help you. So that is a cup of tea you'd get in a standard 90% of households in the UK. You ask for a cup of tea, that's what you get. <laughs> I forgot sugar. Okay, some people have sugar. Personally, I don't have sugar, but if someone says they want sugar, fine. Just do it at the very end. You've done the milk, you've taken the tea bag out, you've thrown that away, then the sugar goes in. If anyone puts the sugar in first, and then the tea bag, and then the hot water, like to me, it's just, that's just wrong. But again, it does just split people down the middle, really. Um, I haven't got any sugar for this video because we don't, we don't actually have any in the house at the moment. Maybe we'll get some post lockdown when we know that people coming over want sugar in their tea. Anyway, I digress. So that's a pretty passable tea. That is how you make a cup of tea in the UK. That tastes nice. Yorkshire tea is very good. Oh, forgot to add. You saw my selection of teapots and teacups at the beginning. And obviously a lot of these teacups are made out of bone china, which is apparently the best kind of teacup for drinking tea because it tastes differently out of bone china. There's a science behind that. I think it's to do with how porous the cup is whether the aromas are like absorbed by the cup or whether they are not. Anyway, we'll go into that another time maybe. This is just a standard Sainsbury's porcelain cup. Sainsbury's is just a supermarket here. And you're not gonna get bone china if you go around your mate's house in the UK. If you do, then you've got posh friends, but usually you just get a cup of tea that looks like this in kind of one of these kind of cups. Tastes fine to me if you're feeling fancy. Or if they're showing off, they might get the best stuff out, which like might look a bit like this with a saucer. But for now, that is a builder's tea, classic in a cup. If you're someone who is on your own and you're not making tea for more than one person, then to me it makes total sense that you might wanna just make a quick tea in a cup. If you've got three people and everyone wants a tea, why not just make a three person teapot? To me, people think it's posh when you get a teapot out. I just think it's practical. Does that make me a tea snob? Maybe. Okay, on to the teapots. Let's talk a little bit about teapots. So at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that you've got like a glass teapot here, really popular for loose leaf tea, because you've got the, uh, I called it a sieve earlier, but I think, what's a nicer word than that? A tea strainer or a filter? It's got that there. If you don't have one of those, you can obviously always invest in a little manual strainer like that, which you can just place into your cup. Or a sort of, this is a bit less pretty. You've got this one, which you could pour straight from your tea 
your teapot through this little strainer here. You've also got strainers that look like this, where the loose leaf tea can go straight inside, sort of clasp it like that and place it in and let it brew. Quite nice, because then you can just take it out if you don't want it to overbrew. And then you've also got fancier ones like this, is a Fortnum's one, and that was more silver a few years ago, but it's been well loved and used. So yeah, that one as well, very fancy. So yeah, glass, teapot, mostly for loose leaf tea. Okay, moving on, you've got fine bone china teapot. And I think the appeal for these teapots, they don't all come like this, by the way. This one sort of like sits in that one like that. A teapot for one. They're just so typically British. They are beautiful. They look really nice. They are quite regal looking, you know, the royals, all of that, British culture. Oh, I love the sound as well. And if you get a spoon and like sort of tap it against something that is fine bone china, you'll get a loud like bell sound, like something like that, apparently, if it's real bone china. Okay, let's stop with the banging. But fine bone china, usually you might find that people do have these in their home, but they only get them out for special occasions. I think life is too short to only get things out for special occasions. So yeah, that's why mine are out right now. Then you've got uh, stainless steel and these ones, they don't really appeal to everyone because not everyone likes the look of these. I personally think they look quite good, depending on how you sort of like wash them. I think because I put mine in the dishwasher, it's gone a little bit like that. But they're really super clean inside. The tea stays really hot in these. They get quite hot from the outside, not on the handle, but obviously here. And I think the flavor that you get from a stainless steel teapot is really different to what you'd get from a ceramic teapot like this. I feel like these ceramic ones absorb a bit more flavor. I don't know if that's fact. I don't know if they're more porous than fine bone china or stainless steel, but when I make an Earl Grey, for example, in this teapot and then also in this teapot, it tastes more bergamonty in this rather than this. So I don't know if that's something to do with the property of the teapot. I think it's quite nice to have a variety of sizes. You never know how many people you might have over. Anyway, let's crack on. So the next tea I'm gonna make, I'm gonna use a different type of Yorkshire tea that I've recently got into. It's called Yorkshire Tea Multi Biscuit Brew and it tastes like tea and biscuits. So my boyfriend doesn't like this, but I really like it. And um, I only really have it when I'm on my own. So I'm gonna go for my one person teapot because he's not here. I'm gonna get my tea bag, I'm gonna put it in there and I'm going to boil my kettle. So. You may have seen in previous videos, we have a hot water tap that produces boiling water as soon as you turn it. But I think I've done something to it, it's no longer working. So we're back to a traditional kettle. And because our water is quite hard in Chichester, again, I'm just gonna filter it and stick it on to boil. Now, a lot of people in the US don't really have kettles in their homes or what they would call an electric kettle. We just call it a kettle. Pretty much every UK home, I've, I've never been anywhere and there's not been a kettle. However, in my research about teapots for this video, I did find that you can actually get an electric teapot. So it basically looks like a teapot. But underneath, you've got like, the whole teapot is the kettle as well. Um, so that blew my mind. So I thought maybe I'd review that in another video. I've never seen anything like that before ever. So um, that was a side note. We'll just wait for that to boil and I will refill my jug for the next time. Okay, kettle's boiled. Now I'm just gonna place the boiling hot water on the tea bag. Apparently, you're not actually meant to put boiling hot water on tea. I think the optimum's probably, mm, I would have to Google it. Let me quick fact check. What temperature water for tea? For black teas, use water around 85 degrees C. For herbal infusions, use 100 degrees C water. Do most kettles boil to 100? You'd think so, wouldn't you? They must, because we always learn in school that if it's bubbling and it's like steaming, then it's 100. Anyway, I'm gonna get my Yorkshire multi biscuit brew. Brew for a little bit longer, because I do like quite a strong brew. And I'm gonna get my milk and I'm gonna place it already in my cup. So 
If you were out somewhere and you were served tea, you'd probably get like a little milk jug like this and then you could just pour your own. But because I'm at home and I know how much milk I want, I'm just gonna get an Oatly. Oatly's my favorite milk at the moment in teas. I think it tastes really, really nice in hot drinks. And it's also dairy free, which is great for me. My stomach doesn't like that much dairy. Some people find it criminal that I put the milk in first, but when I know my milk that I've just put in my cup is not affecting the brew in any way. Whereas if you watch earlier on in the video where I make just a standard cup of tea in a cup, you wait until after to put the milk in. That's my rule. I know a few other people that go by that, but take from this what you will. Just gonna put my Oatly away. You'll notice that my Oatly is a little bit of a, uh, that color doesn't really look like normal milk color, but that's fine. It's made out of oats. I'm looking forward to this, by the way. Something to consider when buying teacups is that the reason people like fine bone china is because apparently it tastes better when you drink from a, a rim of a cup that's really thin. If you think of a wine glass, like a nice wine glass, if you think about how sort of like razor thin they are at the very tip, when the liquid flows from the glass, to your tongue, there's more surface area for the liquid to go over more taste buds on your tongue because of the thinner rim. So that's why people like fine bone china for tea as well. So the thinner the rim here, you'll see that there's more surface area. So apparently that tastes nicer on the tongue. I can't personally say that I notice a huge difference, but there's just something quite nice about drinking from a bit more of a daintier cup when you're in the mood for it. Of course, sometimes I just wanna sit at my desk with a massive mug of tea like this, but there's definitely times where I fancy a teacup like this. It's just the way we are. So I think my tea will probably be nice and brewed now, maybe a little bit longer. Again, as I said in the previous video, you don't squeeze. I'm just gonna get my tea towel, tea towel. People don't know what tea towels are either. Tea towel, and I'm just gonna move it around a little bit. So if this was loose leaf tea, I probably wouldn't do this because it would just sort of infuse a lot easier. Because it's a tea bag, I just wanna move it around a little bit. And let's put that in there. And I'm gonna pour it now. Hopefully you'll be able to see the color from there. That looks really nice. In fact, I think it probably does need a little bit more milk. I do want a little bit more milk than that in my tea. If I don't filter my water through my Brita jug and then I pour my tea, I'll notice like a layer of, it's almost like lime scaly scum at the top of the tea, which looks really unappealing. You don't really want to drink that. Also, if people forget to de-lime scale their, their kettle, you'll see that quite a bit as well. That's the color of it. I think that looks great. I would definitely enjoy that. Something dipping in it. If I had a biscuit, I would dip in it. My mum actually made some scones over the weekend, so I have got a scone here. I will toast that, probably put some jam and clotted cream on it. And in true British style, I will enjoy my tea and my scone. But let me just get one thing clear. That's not something we Brits do every day. We don't have scones with tea and jam and clotted cream. I just happen to have the jam and the clotted cream in the fridge because I bought them specially for a picnic. And all of this tea stuff, I, I just have it because I'm a fanatic. As I've mentioned before, 90% of tea will just be teacup at the very beginning of the video. Go check that bit out. I hope you've enjoyed the other info I've given. I hope I've gone into enough detail here. The last section I will do is loose leaf because I feel like I've got all these gadgets here but I haven't truly shown you how to do a loose leaf tea. So I'll just go and see what herbal I've got. Okay, so a lot of my herbal teas are actually already in bags here. So I've got all of my like, lovely herbal, some caffeine, some not caffeine teas in here. None of them are loose. However, I have got this Greek tea called Gliganiso, which is, I think, uh, anis aniseed? Is that what Gliganiso is? Well, let me just see what gli Gliganiso tea. So I'm just trying to find out. Anise? How do you pronounce that? A-N-I-S-E. Anise, anise. That's what the tea is. I, I, know, I love this tea so much. It reminds me of the village. And so if I wanted to do some of that in here, you can use any herbal tea with these teapots. 
and likewise with with these tea strainers all i would do is I'd just get my little strainer like that it grows quite a lot when it's in there so you don't want to put too much that's about as much as i would use and then you can do it two ways really you can stick that straight in your cup like that and pour your tea in or you can pour more of it into this tea strainer here and then you can do two probably two people out of that cup i wouldn't i don't think you could get three cups unless you're doing small ones like this so herbal just like that i'll show you a little bit now simply just let that brew stirring that around and i would let that brew for probably a good five minutes maybe longer just depends how long you like it that's lovely so i'm gonna let that brew and maybe i'll drink it after this although i might be all teed out i did say at the start of the video that if you stay till the end i will talk a little bit about a greek cypriot twist that loads of people in our community have like put on uh, english tea and that is to add cinnamon and cloves it's quite christmasy if you say that to a british person they might think oh that's a very christmasy twist on tea i'll show you now so these are some cinnamon sticks and then some cloves here all i would do simply is make my tea the normal way i would place probably two cloves in here and about this much cinnamon break off a little bit about that much cinnamon not a lot really i place that in the teapot in fact i'll just get it ready now because when my boyfriend gets home he'll probably want a tea with cloves and cinnamon two two cloves in there the tea bag the hot water fill it up same way as what i've just done here but with the cinnamon and the cloves and it's just really comforting reminds me of cyprus i don't know many greek greeks that do this but it's very popular for cypriots that live in the uk to do this just see it in all my family really right let's have a little tea test delicious absolutely delicious that's lovely i love my life that's really good i hope you've enjoyed this video guys thank you so much for watching it um let me know what else you want to see on tea i'm happy to do a little mini series on tea because i get so many questions about it i look forward to reading the comments don't forget to follow me on instagram facebook all of them my social media will be down here somewhere and subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed i post videos every single week lots of love see you soon bye don't stay awake for too long don't go to bed i'll make a cup of coffee for your head i'll get you up and going out of bed